You will never believe how Red 40 is made. In 1856, Henry Perkin, a British chemist, made a mistake. Trying to make a treatment for malaria, he invented a synthetic food dye. But you will never believe what he used. You would never guess the material used to give color to our foods. Did you know that there was a time when you could drink black water, sip on clear Pepsi, and even slather pink butter or green ketchup on your food? Today, 90% of sodas contain artificial colors. What are they using? How is Red 40 exactly made? Is it dangerous? Today, we're diving into the fascinating history of synthetic food dyes. Food coloring has a long history, with evidence suggesting its use dating back to 1500 BC in Egyptian cities. Ancient candy makers used natural extracts and wine to enhance the appearance of their products. However, during the Middle Ages in Europe, food aesthetics took a back seat as people focused on producing their own food rather than being concerned with how it looked. The modern age saw a resurgence in the importance of food aesthetics, driven by urbanization, trade, and the importation of spices and colors. Augsburg, Germany, for instance, enacted one of the first food laws in 1531, regulating spices and colorants, but it remained expensive to use. In 1856, an 18-year-old British chemist named William Henry Perkin was working as a research assistant for a renowned chemist, and he was attempting to synthesize quinine, a treatment for malaria. With the expansion of the British Empire into remote parts of the world, malaria was wiping out populations of British civil servants and soldiers in the newly established colonies. His experiments involved coal tar, a byproduct of fuel production from coal. However, a mistake in one of his experiments led to the creation of a dark powder. Curious, Perkin washed his flask with alcohol, and to his surprise, he discovered a bright purple residue. Perkin decided to use this newfound substance to dye silk, and it turned out to be a remarkable success. This accidental discovery marked the birth of the world's first synthetic dye. During the 19th century, there was a significant issue with food adulteration in both Britain and the United States, where manufacturers added dangerous metal salts like copper sulfate and lead chromate to make pickles, jellies, and candy appear more vivid. With the discovery of Henry Perkin, coal tar dyes offered a safer and more vibrant alternative, requiring only a small amount and leaving the flavor unaffected. This discovery initiated a golden age of experiments with chemists creating various coal tar-based colors. Henry Perkin established a company to produce dyes, and even Queen Victoria was spotted wearing a dress dyed with Perkin's synthetic mauve color. Food companies began to adopt coal tar colors, using them in products like butter, candy, and alcohol. However, it was not all smooth sailing. Workers in coal tar color factories soon started to develop health issues, including bladder cancer. The public started to be preoccupied. Concerns arose about the safety of coal tar dyes, and the 1906 Pure Food and Drugs Act in the United States granted authorities the power to regulate the approval of food colors. This act drastically reduced the list of permitted synthetic colors from 700 to just seven. People started to realize that cherries that once were red were now naturally yellow. Over the years, more colors were permitted, increasing to 15 by 1931. However, in 1950, dozens of illnesses caused by brightly colored Halloween candy led to the removal of several coal tar colors from the approved list. Red 2, initially made of coal tar, also faced controversy with some tests suggesting it caused tumors in female rats, leading to its removal from certain products. An absolute disaster for food companies who could not afford natural dyes like saffron to color their foods. Food manufacturers gradually stopped using coal tar. Instead, they substituted it with petroleum. You heard right. The artificial food colorings used in 90% of the sodas you drink are made out of petroleum. 
they undergo rigorous testing to ensure they contain no traces of the original petroleum. However, there are still concerns about potential health effects, such as hyperactivity in children and purported contraceptive effects. Over 40% of the food in the standard grocery store has artificial food coloring, and most of that's Red 40. A significant portion of the food we consume today is processed. We all know that. These processed foods undergo alterations from their natural states for various reasons, such as eliminating harmful bacteria, improving visual appeal, and extending shelf life. In fact, about 70% of the average American's diet is composed of processed foods. Many of these foods wouldn't look nearly as appetizing if it weren't for food coloring. Yellow number six, pain reliever with blue number one. Red velvet cake mix, more like red velvet number four. How about Toucan Sam? They color their cereal with a triple dose of artificial colors, and that's a problem because artificial colors are directly linked to hyperactivity and obesity. Well, the research shows that for kids who have ADHD, um, exposure to certain food additives, including some preservatives and food dyes, can exaggerate their symptoms. And 10% of children in the U.S. have been diagnosed with ADHD. So if you're concerned about that, or even just being a parent in general, move away from the processed foods, limit or restrict their use. Food dye has the ability to damage your DNA. I mean, that's just mind-blowing. Right. And yet, the FDA uh, Food Advisory Committee held a hearing, and they voted 8-6, to six not to recommend banning artificial food coloring or requiring a warning label. They made it legal. It's still legal. There's no warning label. But they were asked, this whole committee was asked in a questionnaire, is there a need for additional studies on red number 40? 93% of the committee said yes. 7% said no. 93 of them are saying, yeah, there's a need for additional studies, but we're still going to make it legal. All right, we're still going to have it. And that's kind of one of the issues in, in our culture in America is that we legalize these chemicals and then we wait until the data starts coming in, just pouring in. We wait until the floodgates are opened with the data. Currently, there are seven artificial colors generally permitted in food. Blue one, blue two, green three, red three, red four, yellow five, yellow six, Blue 2 is the only one in this list that is not derived from petroleum. But why do we even need artificial food coloring when there are plenty of natural options available? One key reason is cost. Synthetic dyes can be mass-produced at a fraction of the cost of gathering and processing materials for natural dyes. Another advantage is shelf life, as artificial dyes often outlast their natural counterparts of the same color. The future of food coloring remains uncertain. Regardless of the direction food coloring takes, one thing is clear. The way food looks is just as important as how it tastes. When you go buy food, keep an eye on the ingredients, and I hope you make the right decision. What are your thoughts about today's video? Did you know about the key component of food dyes? Leave your comments down below, and remember to drink a lot of water. See you soon.